Okay, so trends in animal development. I think instead of sort of trying to learn everything by heart, and I'll do a couple of videos on animal filings, but in, instead of sort of remembering everything by heart, I think it's really important to, to kind of understand why animals or species in general came to be where they are. Like what's the sort of evolutionary pattern that led to that? And getting a macro high level understanding of these, uh, of the forces that created the these more, more and more sophisticated animals. So I'll kind of uh, go over two, three of those char characteristics, especially the more interesting ones, from trends that we see from very primitive animals to uh, complex animals like ourselves. Complex animals. So kind of what happens from the primitive to the complex. Um, the most important, or not, probably not the most important, but uh, one of the main one being a radial symmetry. Symmetry versus has animals evolved, or a species evolved, if you want, that's probably better, to a bilateral symmetry. So when we talk about radial symmetry, we, we talk about something like, uh, like a jellyfish, it's very primitive, so it's kind of like this, this, and then things like this, and then you can kind of slice it in every direction, it's going to gain the, the same result. And then um, you might think of a worm, for instance, as far as probably somewhere in between here. But um, uh, or bilateral symmetry, something like us, where we have hands on both sides, and, and we can kind of cut ourselves in half when both halves are, are kind of identical. Um, now that's something you, you, you'll probably learn in any introductory biology class, but it's important to realize why bilater bilateral symmetry is so much better, or uh, so, more, so more evolutionary favorable than is radial symmetry. Bilateral symmetry makes sure, um, optimizes the animal for moving in one direction, optimizes for moving fast and quickly in, in a very specific directions. So for motile animals, so animals that move, bilateral symmetry is a big, big, big advantage. Uh, you'll see more on the reasons as we continue as well. But for things that are static, right, radial makes more sense because it's, especially in the, wa in the water, for instance, in animals that just kind of stick to rocks and wait for nutrient to pass by, it's much better to be, uh, to be uh, kind of smoothed not intercept the water too much. That makes a lot of sense. And bilateral symmetry makes us be directional animals, if you want. Um, also, something that's interesting uh, is a good question to ask yourself is why a head? Or <clears throat> not why a brain. So, so wait, so you, do complex animal, animals typically have a separate head with sensory, sen sensory stuff on it, like eyes, mouth, whatever, um, and uh, very basic animals tend to have uh, their, their primitive brain somewhere else in, in, in their body. So that's a very important question to ask yourself. So why, why would we have a head at all, right? Why, why is not our brain in our stomach, for instance? Um, that's an interesting question to ask. So if, for the reason why we, why we have uh, a brain where it, where it is right now is because it's close to our eyes. Uh, because our eyes, our ears, and everything. So all our main sensory apparatus has to be as closest as possible to our brain so we can react quickly to stimulus. And you can see how that favors animals over time and gets selected for evolutionary. So the second question you ask there is, then why are our eyes on our head? Or why, then why are our ears on our head, for instance? Uh, right, so I didn't answer the question. And this is where it becomes interesting, right? It makes sense that we have our eyes at the highest point of our body, right? It makes sense that we have our ears at the highest point of our body to be able to kind of see on top of trees or on top of, of things and see the longest distance possible. And that, that, um, that's an evolutionary advantage. So all of this kind of comes together in the, this head, right? 
And that's why it makes sense. Because when you think about it, there's a lot of stuff we have to do to keep our head where it is. Like Our head is incredibly heavy and we have to build this, this uh, all this system to make sure our head stays upright and, and we spend a lot of energy, we might not realize it, at keeping that head where it is. And we kind of get an intuition why we evolved, for, or animals in general evolved to have a distinct head with, with the brain directly connected as close as possible to respond as fast as possible to stimuli. Um, as well, when we look at reproductive patterns, we can see as, as, as animals evolve, uh, more primitive animals, oops, that's the way I normally, more primitive animals have um, many, many young and very little parent. And as well, uh, have little parenting and uh, our young uh, mature rapidly, Oops. mature rapidly, and uh, tends to be external as well. Well, it's not always true. Um, kind of a nag as opposed to uh, internal. And when we move to more complex animals, we tend to see very fewer youngs, fewer youngs, and much more intensive parenting of those youngs. So, so the first approach is to have many, 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 many babies. You know that a good portion of those are going to be are going to be either die or be predated or for some other reason will not um, continue. So there's a big curve. So a lot of a lot of babies are born. There's a, a lot of them that, that die at very young. And then some small portion of those remain. But the, the premise of this strategy is to bring a lot in the world and eventually some, some, some are going to continue. Versus the mammal way of doing things, which is to bring as few as people, few people as, as possible and make sure they try. Right? Um, so yeah, that's... <laughs> sort of all this stuff here, these... And these things kind of get you, in, or for me, it really helps me get an intuitive, in, intuitive sense of these things when I read it. Especially in biology, I think it's really important to, to understand, to thoroughly understand the evolutionary reason why these, why these things evolved to be where they are right now. Um, I hope that helps.